I often get asked by my students how to create animations using Grasshopper. Of course you could just record your screen whilst dragging a number slider around, but there's actually a really easy way to create really sophisticated and professional animations using simple tools inside of Grasshopper. Right now if we try to create an animation, it'll look like you know a Grasshopper preview, and we want to dress this up a little bit so it looks kind of like swish and professional. Inside of Grasshopper, we can actually make um, geometry look a little bit nicer using something called the preview component. So I'm going to double click on the canvas, I'm going to type in preview, and there's a custom preview component here. So this can be found under display and under preview, just here if you ever get lost. And what the custom preview component takes in is it takes it in a geometry to preview, and then a material that we're going to apply to that geometry. So if I plug in this geometry here, by default, the material is actually pink. I'm going to preview um, this guy off here. And this takes in something called a color swatch. So a color swatch will enable us to change the material or the color value of the geometry we're displaying through our custom preview component. I'm just going to type in swatch, color swatch here. Um, and it's a really easy to use and kind of fun to use component. It's just got a color and then that goes in as the input, so I could change it to white. And if you want to change the color, you just click on the color swatch and a little kind of color menu comes up. If you want to change the color, adjust the hue. So I might go with like a nice shade of um, blue. Um, and if you want to change the saturation, just pull that up and drag it across. And of course you can just drag around here and you notice it updates live in your Rhino window as well. So one thing to notice with your custom preview component is if I preview this off, you'll see it disappears. But if I now go into rendered mode, you'll see that my custom preview is still here despite being turned off. So custom preview always displays in rendered mode unless you right click and prompt it to not display in render. So if I click off render, it won't appear. We actually want it to display in render for this little exercise because we're going to do an animation of this. Um, but basically, if you're using render mode, just be aware that that custom preview is always going to appear unless you specify it off. So our animation is going to look something like this. We're going to kind of slide across through here all the way up to there. And I might actually delete that little reference point that we had previously. And I just want to make sure that, you know, this is a nicely centered animation like that. Um, so our animation is now going to basically sit here and we're going to create a bunch of frames that we can slide through. So the way you create an animation, it's actually the simplest part of this whole process. On any number slider, you can right click on the name and you click on animate. And what will appear is something called the animation controls window. So under animation controls, we can specify where our animation is going to save to, what kind of format it's going to save in, the resolution, the number of frames, and then we get a small preview of what that is actually going to look like so we're aware of it. So because I'm in rendered mode, I'm going to get a rendered preview. Um, a lot of your settings will be a little bit different to mine because I've changed the defaults, but I'll talk through a few of the things I think you should change. The first thing you should do, I'm going to create a folder to save all these in because what the animation actually saves at is a collection of frames or image files. I'm saving mine as PNG files, and these could easily go and be turned into an animation in, say, Photoshop or um, Adobe Premiere. On the desktop, make a new folder, I'm going to call it animation01. And I'm going to select OK, and that's where it's going to save my animation to, to animation01. I think by default it's a BMP file, just change that to a PNG file for the purpose of this exercise. I've got my viewport set mode set to perspective, which is just like the view you're currently in. I have my resolution set to 1920 by 1080, so the standard resolution of a computer display, and the frame count's currently set to 100. This is the number of images that your animation is going to generate. I'm going to leave that as it is, but if you want like a longer animation or a higher frame rate, you want to increase that size. So now I'm going to hit OK, and what will happen is it's going to create a frame, or 100 frames, for this number slider at a series of intervals. So you watch as I hit OK. The number slide is very slowly ticking up and it's going and creating an image file for every single iteration of these frames. And in the top left corner um, on the command line, you see kind of like an estimation of how much time is left um, to create this animation as it runs through. So it'll take a little bit of time for your animation to be done, but once it's completed, you can navigate to the folder, which is on my desktop, I've saved it. And you'll see here you get 
that collection of frames that dictate your animation. So then you can go into, um, you know, a Photoshop or, you know, an Adobe Premiere or something like that, and you can convert all of these really easily into a video that plays your animation and shows kind of that, you know, power of Grasshopper, that algorithmic relationship that you've created completely in play.